Hello, I'd love to show you how to make this really fun hexagonal um, flip card. It's a pocket card, you, lots of different names for it, um, but it's really good fun to make, but also just looks really impressive. So you can put lots of tags and tabs and pockets and things in there. You can have removable elements as well, like so. So you've got extra decorating opportunities there. Everything's held together in the middle, so these tabs and such aren't going to fall out. So you could actually use these as holders for things like uh, coupons, gift cards, that sort of thing. Um, I've done mine, special dad written on the front. Um, this is ideal because at the moment here in the UK, we've got Father's Day just around the corner, but actually this can be done for any theme, um, any time of year as well, any genre. Um, you can see you can do it as a baby brag book maybe with all the details and photos in there, maybe a mini album for documenting a holiday, whatever you want to. So let's get started with creating this using the SVG file that I've linked down in the description below. Please don't forget to subscribe if you like this video to keep up with more tips and tutorials. So I've used that SVG on a 12 by 12. This is a single sided paper. You can use a double sided if you like uh, with whatever mat machine you like to use. Now I have given instructions at the end of this video for taking the SVG that I've got. If you go to the link in the description, you'll find a link to that over in the files on my uh, Facebook page. So I've given you instructions on taking this file into both Cricut and into the uh, Brother workspaces. So uh, you can see how to, you need to adjust the score lines in each one. So skip forward to that if you're looking for how to create this with score lines rather than just lots of cut lines. Really simple to do and I'll walk you through it all as well. So I've cut this and I did change the center lines to score lines first of all they're just dotted lines so I've got everything here now this is uh, this cardstock is called uh, Alice in Teal it's a craft stash exclusive cardstock so what I'm going to do first of all is create my mountain folds now the majority of these folds are going to be mountain folds so you can see there the, the one through the center is a mountain fold your two tabs are also going to be so these are the bits at the end so there's one and then another. Now what I quite like about this is that this is a white core cardstock and um, so it's got white on the reverse that means I can decorate that however I want to but I also get this kind of distressed edge to it as well with the white peeking through. I love that for this look. If you're not keen on that I would suggest using a solid colour uh, or solid core cardstock. So, so far our mountain folds are through the middle and the two tabs. Whoops, we're just going to do another two and they are your vertical lines. So there's one. You see how easily once you create those score lines in your uh, cutting machine workspace, how easy they are to fold. So, so far all mountain folds, you've got your grid and then you've got your two tabs. Now the diagonal lines are your um, valley folds. So that's going to be one coming from here down to here. So just gently fold this so that it falls on that diagonal and secure that with your bone folder. And then again, another valley fold on the next couple of grids there. So folding that like so. You'll be able to see all these markings on your template. There we go. Okay, so now we need to fold this in half. What we're going to do is you can at the moment you can decorate this if you want to right now I'm going to show you the construction and then we'll do the decorating afterwards it's entirely up to you whichever way you find easiest uh, just in case you're just flicking to this to see the quick construction this is how we do it so I'm going to just apply some double-sided tape you can use wet glue if you like but I prefer double-sided tape because I know that's not going to seep out and stick anything where it shouldn't be so we need that on the uh, colored area of each of the tabs so the inside of each of the tabs one there and another there so snip that I'm using quite a wide double-sided tape now everything I'm using today uh, all of my tools uh, my adhesives my inks and definitely the papers and the embellishments that I'll be using later on these are all available at craft stash again in the description you've got a link to craft stash both the UK site and the US site so you can find everything there so just fold that over joining the two sides and there we have the basic beginnings of our hexagon hexagon pocket fold card 
Now you should have a solid rectangle on the left hand side and on the reverse a solid on the right hand side there. So because we've created our mountains and valleys it should be very easy to just pop your valleys in as you work your way around and you'll see this front piece will start to come over. Now turn this over and make sure all your valleys are pushing in, there we go, and you will create that hexagon shape. Now just secure everything and you'll find this is identical both on the reverse and on the front. There we go. So now you can pull the front left hand corner and the reverse right hand corner and you've got your card that opens and closes. Now you may need to do this a few times and keep uh, securing those lines in there just to make sure it always falls into place. But we're going to do something now that's going to just secure that centerpiece to make it quite a little bit less wobbly. So I'm going to use a paper that's called fabric paper. It's a really clever fabric paper from uh, Simply Made Crafts. Again, you can find this on Craft Stash. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to trim a piece that's around about the same size as these pockets. Now, I could give you the measurements, but of course the pockets are going to vary depending on uh, how you scale this SVG file in your cutting machine. It may be that you've only got um, access to an A4 or a letter size cutting mat, so um, you may need to scale this right down. Now I'm just looking for that score line that I just made that was somewhere along there. There it is. So I use a scoring tool rather than a pencil to make my marks. A little harder to see, but it means that I don't have any pencil marks or pen marks to clean up. Now this is going to sit in the center here and I'm going to glue it. So I'm going to glue the left hand side to the reverse triangle there, in there, and then I'm going to glue the right hand side to the triangle at the front. So that's going to hold the front and back together, okay? So just a little bit of glue. It's really handy to have a long reach glue applicator or of course again you can use your double sided tape. So I'm just going to place some glue along the centre line in there and on that triangle. And I'm going to place this in and lay that flat just for a moment, making sure my glue is not seeping out. Okay, then I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. Just down the edge inside on that triangle. Removing any excess and lay that down flat. Now, just being careful because of course that's got to dry still. What I've done, just so you can visualize it, I've applied glue to this triangle here, the reverse of here, and then on the reverse to this triangle here. Okay, so just making sure those are sticking nicely. You can still fold your hexagon shaped card in there as long as you've cut your tri your rectangle in there to the right size and not any larger I'm just going to use my bone folder again just to make sure all of those lines inside are nicely folded down now we can see when we open up that's holding the inside together now we still have two more pockets available to add tags to, and these can be removable tags. You can make this one removable, but of course I like to hold, keep it in there just to keep the whole card a little more sturdy. So we've now got the option of adding the tags in, which I'll do in a moment, and then we can go ahead and decorate everything also. So for my tags, I'm going to make them ever so slightly smaller than the last tag we did. I'm going to use my pokey tool again and I'm going to just scratch into the fabric paper using that same paper again. And I'm going to use my scoring board just to cut one of these. Now I'll create one of these with you, but you'll need two to complete the um, card. Let's just pop that in there. There we go. Like I say, if you're scaling down your, your template or if you're using the printable template, just so you know, there is a printable template available if you don't have a cutting machine. And you'll also find that in the files on my Facebook page, link below. And you'll also find another video, a separate video, which I'll just add up here now for you. That will take you to a video showing you how to use the printable template instead of the SVG. Now this tag, just make sure that that's going to fit inside this first rectangle. If I just open this up again, 
wants to fit inside this first section, you'll notice that the corner is quite tight. It's closed together, but it's just folded together. There's no glue in there. So you can slot that inside there. That will hold that in place. And just again, make sure that sits in there. And the same, you'll do the same in that corner too. So to decorate this, what I've done is I've taken some elements from my textures range. So this is a range of um, papers, dyes, stamps, washi tape, grey board that I've got available at Craft Stash. It's called Textures and I'm going to be using today the Vintage Travel range. So uh, Vintage Travel has glow, old vintage globes in there, um, suitcases, tickets, things like that. I absolutely love it and it's perfect for this car because I want to make this quite a masculine theme. So um, with this, I'm going to go with, let's just find my stamp, which I actually haven't even bought in here. We go. There's the stamp with the postcard on there. And then I've got postmarks as well, if you want to use those. I'm just going to use this postcard and I'm just going to stamp onto the center of this, leaving a little bit more space to the left-hand side there. So there's that postmark stamp or postcard stamp. and. What I want to do here, and this is optional, you don't have to do this, um, is just to make that tag a little more fancy. Like I say, don't forget you're doing two of these, but I'm just going to show you one of them. So I'm going to take a nesting die. This is a pretty frame die. I believe it's a uh, Daisy May Designs die here, and it's just a straight edge because the rest of the tag will be a straight edge. And I just want this top cut, so rather than risking trying to cut the rest of the design. I'm just going to feed my tag through the die. So the rest of the tag is sitting on top of the die and just the top there has the detail. Now looking at the parts of the die that are peeking out the edge, making sure that that's sitting nice and flush and um, straight. And then just tack that down. Now I'm going to just run this through my small die cutting machine. So just turn this over and just ensure, because you may have seen I didn't run the whole tag through, I didn't want to add an impression of the die embossed into the rest of the tag. So I've just run the rollers through the top part and back again. So just double check that that's all cut through nicely. Remove your tape, because it's a fabric tape, you may find a little bit of the paper remain, remains on the tag, or sorry, on the tape. There we go. And we've got a nice decorative edge to our tab. Now, simply just pop a hole in the top, maybe a little bit of inking around the edge as well. I just use the excess that I've got on my blending brush here for my black, um, a tag, maybe a little bit of twine, and that's good to go and pop inside of your card just in there. So now with our tags ready, we are okay to go ahead and decorate the inside and the outside of the card with some pattern paper. Now, although this is white on the inside, I want to also cover that as well. This is easier to do um, if you do it before you do the constructing, the folding, um, but just be aware you've got some tabs in here that will cover over some of your papers. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So put my tags to the side. I'm leaving, of course, that piece in there that I've glued in. And I'm going to, first of all, ink around all of the edges of this. Again, something that if you've got the time and you remember, is much easier to try to do um, before you construct the card. So all of these score lines, the mountain folds at least, will need some ink over them. Particularly if, like me, you're using a cardstock that's got a white core to it, and then these edges as well. Now I'm going to be using the Vintage Travel papers. There's some beautiful papers in here. Um, I could say suitcases, skies, you've got lots of postcards and Polaroids and tabs that you can cut out of there. Um, I'm going to be focusing on this one, first of all. This one is going to be for my solid rectangles. Now there's two solid rectangles in here. Again, I'm not going to tell you uh, the sizes in case you've scaled this down for the SVG, but you'll want a rectangle for here and then on the reverse, the same again. So I'm going to use this paper and then I'm going to use another paper that's a little more plain. Um, hopefully I've still got some more of it left in here. There we go. 
this one which still has a design and pattern on it and it will match the other paper but I'm going to use this but this one I'm going to cut into uh, triangles so I'm going to first of all cut my uh, rectangles the same as the solid ones so I'll need um, four of those and then I'm going to cut those into eight triangles by cutting them diagonally in half then I'm going to do the same again now you need to be aware that when you're decorating the outside of your card your diagonal line to create your triangles is going to be in one direction once you're doing your triangles for the inside of the card you're going to need your diagonal line to be cutting in the opposite direction very important if you are again using a single sided paper so after a little while there's my card all uh, matted and layered up as you can see i've gone round with black ink all of the mats and layers i've got my um, diagonal triangles and my solid piece on both sides and then on the inside as i open that up for you you can see we've got all of those triangles no solid pieces in there but we have the triangles instead uh, so that's all working nicely still continuously checking that your card is folding nicely as you work so we can now put our tags in now these are perfect if you want to add holders for gift cards maybe if you want to give cash or money and um, things like that or even for photos if you want to make this into a bit of a brag book or a mini album now I'm just tucking this in each side so that the twine pieces don't overlap the top because that kind of gives away the surprise if you see bits of string overlapping but if that's the look you like and you want to have that sort of really full look then you can keep those just as you keep put each one in just again making sure that they're not overlapping any score lines and that everything still folds down nicely now lastly what we need to do is decorate the top so or the front here now decide as you look at them which side you prefer for your front because of course it may be that one side went a little bit better than the other with the decorating and the matting and layering i'm going to bring in this is one of my favorite pieces from the vintage travel collection and it's from this it's the gray board so there's a balloon uh, as in a hot air balloon a globe and also um, a camera in there now these all match perfectly with the uh, die sets that come with the collection as well so you see you've got the camera the hot air balloon the layering hot air balloon and the globe as well so they match us in there the exact same size as the die so you can use your gray board along with the dies if you want to all again found on that um, link that I've got down below for all the textures products and the vintage travel products so this is going to sit nicely just on there now I'm going to make sure that I'm not going too far over any lines there and then I'm going to take the the excess from the gray board the bit you'd usually throw away and pop that back in the middle there now usually what I do here is I would paint gesso a heat emboss this gray board but I really like the look of it as it is just raw so I'm actually going to glue it on there and I might just pick out the edges in a little while with um, a little bit of gilding wax or something rather than really painting it all and losing that nice raw natural look so using a wet glue and just an ordinary wet glue that you'd use for paper should be absolutely fine for gluing down gray board making sure you get all the small areas because you don't want any delicate areas of the gray board lifting up again folding just to ensure that that's all um, sitting really nicely nice and straight and that nothing's getting caught as it folds now for this I'm going to add a title I think this is going to be a card for Father's Day it might have a couple of gift cards inside um, but for this I'm going to add a nice banner over the top here and then I'm going to just use a clip um, a nice bulldog clip um, a nice attractive one if I can find one and that's going to just clip the card closed here and then really that is going to be our card finished so you've got the interactivity of having those tags that can be removed and placed back in you can um, switch those up or add to them with gift cards as well little notes in there photos uh, but all in all it's a really fun card the nice hexagon shape um, I'll now show you photos of the finished item um, as I finish that sentiment and the clip and things um, but don't forget you can also find the printable template which makes a slightly smaller card but that's all linked below and there's also another video just here that you can watch using that one and that's making much more of a feminine version.
If you're working in Canvas for Cricut, you can upload your image or use your recent upload, add that to your canvas, and you'll notice that as you add it, it's uh, all solid lines. So what you need to do is, um, let's just zoom out a bit here, is simply select everything and ungroup. Then you need to select the outer line and drag that away. Select everything that's left, all those inner lines. Then you need to come over to group and you need to make these so that they are score lines. So up at the basic cut there and scroll down to score. That will make them dashed lines. Then you can come, then you can come back to your outer line and drag that back over. You may need to just zoom in to reposition that exactly where it should be as before. Once you're happy with the position, you can go ahead and select everything again. You can group it all, and then before sending this to cut, you need to attach it all while it's selected. This will make sure it all stays together, and then send it to be cut on your cutting mat. Now, if you're working on Brother Workspace, import your SVG, as you usually would, and you'll notice this time that your SVG is solid black. So you want to select everything, go to the fill colour and you want to drop that opacity right down to zero. Then go to the line and ensure that that opacity is up at full so it's black. Then again you need to just select the outer line and drag that away. You can select the inner lines and come across to the operation there. And you'll see underneath is a dash pattern. So you need to go to dash line. Any of these dash lines will create a score line. Drag your outer solid line back over and again reposition so it's in exactly the same place again. You can then select everything. Go up to the top bar there where it says layer and group. And you're now ready to send this to your cutting machine.